this is a barred owl, uh -huh. and it is typical of the type of owls that we have in this neighborhood. Not only do we have the barred owl, but we have the great horn owl, which is larger than this one, uh -huh. and we also have the barn owl. The barn owl is a smaller version and has a kind of a heart-shaped white face, and it lives in more nests in that little white barn there, other side of our garden, which is right in between our house and the Peterson, the old Peterson house. You're right next door. And these birds have been in and around this neighborhood for years. And we never did think anything about them harming you or anything of that nature until this case came up. And what we've been trying to find out is whether or not these bird or one of these birds actually struck Mrs. Peterson outside of her residence on that fateful night back in 2001. Right, okay, well certainly that's sharp enough to hurt anybody. Right. The reason we have started looking into this, or the reason that I looked into it initially, is because uh, being a lawyer here in town, I was interested in the case. And the first thing that jumped off the page to me was it said the wounds were tripronged lacerations. Also, it indicated that the wounds had measurements of 0 0.25 inches in diameter, three that were uh, below this eyebrow, three above this eyebrow, uh, one in her ear, and one in her neck. And all of them had the same measurements. In addition to that, there were other wounds on her body that were described as having very similar measurements and I felt it was very unusual that you would get that many puncture wounds uh, from an instrument with that precise kind of measurement. Yes. And it made me curious. Uh -huh. So when I looked at that I felt like these look very similar to turkey tracks. But I said, but a turkey couldn't do this. And I said, well how could this have, have come about? And then I said the only th raptors that I know of that hunt at night when this crime supposedly took place are owls. So I contacted a uh, ornithologist and I told them of my suspicion that an owl may have done, uh, may have struck someone and I didn't know if owls did, could harm you or not and they started to tell me that owls do harm you, that owls can be very dangerous I look at that and I feel those talons and ouch, they can hurt. Yes. But I have to say, it's hard to believe straight up that an owl can injure someone so badly they die. I'm sorry, it's, that's hard to believe. I certainly understand with you and I shared that uh, same feeling at the time. I said, how could this possibly have happened? And how, how could a bird have done this? But nevertheless, I was fairly interested to see if this was possible. So I left here and I drove to Raleigh to the Museum of Natural Resources in our state capital. And it was there that I found a specimen of a mounted owl such as this. Yeah. And I also found a library full of books that told me what owls could do. Mr. Bent uh, was, had written a book about how these owls make bloody gash wounds on the top of the head. Really? And then I went in to take the uh, get the Xeroxes and I looked there and there was a mounted owl right next to the Xerox machine and that's when I went well one two three four and that was the first time I even knew that there were four toes on a foot. I knew absolutely very little about owls before this started and I kept thinking well how could it have occurred inside the house because everyone felt like that with all the blood splatter at the bottom of the steps that the Mrs. Peterson had been attacked inside the house. It wasn't until I remembered that there were two drops of blood on the brick walkway outside the house that was shown in the police videotape, the very first piece of evidence that the state put on in this trial, I believe. 